What's going on guys, my name is Renegade, today we're here to ask and answer the question, how good is Vampire Lord class? Now Vampire Lord class came just came out today, and so I'll be doing the full treatment here, which is how to obtain the class, what enhancements to use, what weapon range to use, what the abilities and passives do, what combo to use, or just simply how to use the class, and how well it serves its designated purpose. And finally, I wrap things up with my own opinion on said class. If you'd like any other classes to receive this treatment and be part of the How Good Is series, then let me know in the comment section down below on Twitter or on Discord, links for all that are in the description down below. Either way though, let's start off the video by going over how to obtain Vampire Lord. Now there's been a lot of confusion surrounding how to get Vampire Lord. First things first, there are four versions of this class. The first version is kind of un insignificant, it's the old Vampire class from like 2008 and it's, it's rare. Um, that class used to have Rogue skills but now it's been updated and it's got Vampire Lord skills and so this one is called Vampire. The second version is the non-rare, seasonal variant of the class. This version can be bought with ACs or farmed, and this one is just simply called Vampire Lord. The third version of this class is the rare version. This version can also be farmed or bought with ACs, and this one is called Royal Vampire Lord, and this one will go rare after this event ends. The fourth and final version is called Enchanted Vampire Lord. This, ver this version is rare, it comes with the Blood Moon Treasure Chest, which is available from Badalon and that will go rare at some point in the near future too, and this version cannot be farmed. So there's just simply Vampire, Vampire Lord, Royal Vampire Lord, and Enchanted Vampire Lord. All of those versions I listed have identical skills, passives, and stats. None of them hold any advantages over the others. Both of the farmable versions have the same farming requirements, so that would be the Vampire Lord and Royal Vampire Lord, um, and the requirement to farm for those is 300 Blood Moon tokens. These are obtained from slash join Blood Moon, from completing a repeatable quest. Now, to actually accept this quest and to, you know, actually complete it, you have to do the quest line at slash join Blood Moon. It's not too hard. There's like an annoying puzzle at the start. And I'm sure you can find videos on YouTube on how to do that. Um, but essentially, the requirement for the quest is just to kill two monsters, both of which unlock after you complete the quest line in the area. Or you could even join a public room and go to random players. Alternatively, you can just purchase Royal Vampire Lord or just Vampire Lord for 2,000 ACs from the shop at slash join Blood Moon. For enhancements, the class description recommends Wizard and Lucky, so they kind of want you to do a combination. However, this class is a farming class, and so your main priority is damage. Neither enhancement really offers much of an advantage in terms of survivability, so the best option is just whatever enhancement does the most damage, which in this case is luck. So my recommendation for your enhancements is full luck. However, as with every class in the series, if you for some reason have found a advantage to using wizard enhancements, then please let me know in the comment section down below, and uh, feel free to just experiment with the enhancements, honestly. It's not too much of a big deal, though. Enhancement, the damage seems to be pretty, pretty uniform across the board. Next up, we have weapon range. Now, your weapon range doesn't generally affect your hits that much with this class. Unstable, I found to be ever so slightly weaker than stable. I tested this all day long today. Honestly, I spent way too much time on this. And, uh, but yeah, my, my conclusion is with weapon range is that generally a more stable weapon will be, will be better. However, like I said, doesn't really affect your, your hits that much, so just use whatever weapon you've been using pretty much. Vampire Lord has two rank 4 passives and one rank 10 passive. Your two rank 4 passives are Pure Blood, which increases your endurance by 25%, which increases your health, that's what endurance does. And Ageless, which increases your intellect by 30%, and it reduces your crit rate by 20%. Now your rank 10 passive is called Sanguine Lord, and that increases your overall damage output by 20%. Now let's talk about your abilities. So ability number one, or your auto attack, is called Slash, and it is a pretty unique auto attack. It has a two second cooldown. The description says you slash out at two targets with your extended vampire claws, dealing 70% weapon damage to each. So it's actually ranged as well, which means you can you can initiate a fight with just your auto attack, which is quite quite a unique thing that not many classes have. Ability number two is called Devour Blood. It consumes 25 mana, has a five second cooldown, deals damage to up to two enemies, and heals for some of the damage dealt, applies blood loss debuff to your enemies, reducing the damage they do by 50% for five seconds. And so this is actually loopable, you can loop that effect around if you want to do that. Um, also at the end it says does not apply blood loss while Aspect of the Bat is activated. And so Aspect of the Bat is an, is an ability that you'll activate and it has some benefits, but one of, the, one of the bad things about Aspect of the Bat is it reduces effects on certain abilities. So your next ability is called Sonar Scream. It consumes no mana, has a 10 second cooldown, applies Deafened debuff to 4 enemies, increasing the damage that they take by 30% for 8 seconds. If you have Aspect of the Bat activated, applies Sonar Senses buff to yourself, increasing your own hit chance by 50% for 8 seconds. 
does not apply deafened while Aspect of the Bat is activated. So again, Aspect of the Bat is an ability, you'll apply it and then it'll give you certain benefits, but also, again, it negates certain effects from abilities. Ability number four is called Ghoul Gouge, and it applies, uh, it has 25 mana consumption with an eight second cooldown, deals damage to up to two targets and applies gouged debuff to your enemies, dealing damage over 12 seconds and does not apply gouged debuff while Aspect of the Bat is active. So again, pretty much every ability in this class has a uh, has its effects removed by Aspect of the Bat. And finally, your last ability is called Aspect of the Bat. It consumes 25 mana, has 30 second cooldown. You take on the Aspects of a Bat. Your haste and crit chance increase by 500% for 15 seconds, but you deal 50% less damage, take 50% more, your skills cost 100% more mana, and no longer applies a debuff to your enemies. So, essentially, um, that's, that's the class. It's quite simple, um, and so we'll get into how to use it. Now let's discuss how to use this class. First and foremost, Vampire Lords of Farming class. I'm, I'm trying to solo with this class, but it's just, it's really, you know, it's either going to be really bad because you're going to be running out of mana, or it's going to be really bad because to prevent yourself running out of mana, you're going to have to go really slowly. So it's, it's really just not a very good soloing class at all. You can kind of get away with it because you do have a heal that you can kind of keep spamming, but not really. I wouldn't rec really recommend using this, this class on any less than two targets. So in a two target environment, the way to use this class is to use Aspect of the Bat. Now, I've heard the arguments, you know, Aspect of the Bat, you know, you're, you're halving your damage, you know, you're increasing your mana costs and stuff, but honestly, it's the way to go with this class. It's the only way in which this class is going to deal any meaningful damage. Honestly, the abilities by themselves, they're okay, you know, if the class didn't have Aspect of the Bat, they're okay, but Aspect of the Bat is what makes it actually a pretty interesting class. So, wh why is that? Well, Aspect of the Bat, like I said before, increases your haste by 500%. And you take 50% more damage, and you deal 50% less damage, and your abilities cost 100% more mana, but that doesn't matter. Your lifesteal is really good when targeting two monsters, because it's stealing life from two monsters at once. Your auto attack is really good, because it's going to be pretty much always critting, because you, in you increase your crit chance by 500% as well. And uh, the rest of your abilities are gonna, uh, not only going to crit, but you're going to be able to use them uh, with a 500% haste boost. So you're going to be able to use them with a really significant boost in the frequency, because Essentially, a haste boost reduces your cooldowns. Now, I believe the game has some sort of cap on how much of a haste boost you can get because it's definitely not five times faster than usual. You're not getting a five times speed reduction. Uh, that would be ridiculous. You'd be able to use ability number one every second. And clearly, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm like, yeah, that's one, two, th pretty much almost three seconds before I can use it again. So it's, it's clearly not a five times faster haste boost, but it's still much, much faster than... Uh, normal and so you are overall dealing more damage with aspect of the bat I have tested it and yes You do definitely take out multiple targets in a shorter amount of time when you have aspect of the bat applied So what that leads me to, to tell you guys then is apply aspect of the bat and then just start your fight And it doesn't really matter what else you do. You just spam everything It doesn't really not matter what order you do it in ability number three is the only thing that's gonna really actually influence the rest of the fight um, however, you're just going to be applying that anyway at some point, so it's not really a big deal. Um, if you're wondering, ability number three just in increases your hit chance by 50%. So yeah, I mean, it's just a it's a, just an interesting mechanic because you're sacrificing some of your your uh, other abilities' effects, but you're also uh, increasing your haste and your you know crit chance and all that by a lot. So it's a it's a pretty interesting mechanic. And finally, at the end of every episode of How Good Is, I give a quick impression of what I personally think of this class and I just summarize sort of does this class fulfill its purpose very well. So obviously the purpose for this class is farming, there's not really any other way to put it. This class doesn't really sustain itself very well when fighting monsters by its by itself, you know, in a solo situation. So really it's it's more of a farming class other than anything else. Uh, and so as a farming class, well it's 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 first of all it's one of its main disadvantages is the fact that it targets two monsters at once. Other farming classes like Blazebinder, Abyssal Angel, um, Chaos Slayer, um, what's some other ones? Lycan, I think, is a farming class. I can't remember that shit, though. Um, there's, those classes offer more targets to hit. I don't think Lycan does, actually. Not sure. Either way, a lot of other farming classes out there, they offer you a chance to hit more targets. So it's sort of, it's sort of its main disadvantage. However, its advantages is with its 
absolutely rock solid consistency. It's almost blaze binder level consistency where you are never, you're pretty much never missing when you've got Aspect of the Bat applied. You're pretty much never not critting. You're pretty much never out of mana because of how many crits you're getting. And you are just mowing down stuff. It doesn't really feel like it. It's not particularly satisfying to use. I know a lot of people get satisfaction out of getting really big hits. And unfortunately, this class doesn't offer that. However, this class does have overall a really large damage output because it, of the fact that you are just using everything so quickly when you've got Aspect of the Bat applied and everything's critting, you know, and uh, yeah, it's just your auto attack targets two monsters, so your damage output's actually pretty good. Um, and so overall, I'd call this this farming class decent. It's not too hard to get. Honestly, if you're farming it, it's really not too hard to get. You can get it in like an afternoon if you're a member and probably a bit bit more time than that if you're a non-member, but it's really not hard to get. Not Probably not worth the two KSEs and definitely not worth the 10 KSEs. Um, however, it is, it is worth your time to farm it, and if so, if you are interested in getting it, then I'd personally recommend you get it. However, other classes like Scarlet Sorceress, maybe Blaze Binder, Abyssal Angel, those sorts of classes are better. However, would you guys like to see me compare this class to those other classes I mentioned? Let me know in the comment section down below. Tell me what you would like to see this class compared to. Maybe Blaze Binder, maybe Abyssal Angel, maybe, you know, Dark Blood Storm King, Troll Spellsmith, you never know. I'll pull anything out of the bag if you want. And so let me know in the comment section down below which class you'd like to see this one compared to and uh, make sure you upvote other comments that have ideas you like. Either way though guys, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.